brethren, a blessed day to you. I'm excited and I want to give God praise and thanks for his goodness towards us. I'm excited to share with you, or oh, especially with those of you who may have walked away from the Lord. I'm excited to share with you that you can come on back and be with the Lord and do that in which that he has called you to do. I want you to know that God is a God of another chance. I want you to know that if you reach to the place where you confess your sin, if you walked away from it, that he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from fall and righteousness. I closed last morning when I shared with you that, that Peter used the method and whatever method one may sing means one thing, it was a clear message that he preached. Here's what I learned from this message, and I want to share with you what I have learned. There's some things that I have learned from this message that God has taught me, and I trust that you will learn those things. I learned that it was a message in the one good understand. When we get up to preach the word of God, we must preach so that people could understand. The congregation had no need of asking what he was saying or what was the meaning of those tones? It was a brand new message of the gospel. He was preaching to them, and you killed Jesus. He preached to them, he was buried, but Jesus Christ was resurrected. It was the first time he preached it, and the first time the order. It was based against the historical background, which the theorists was very yeah. Uh, all in Acts chapter 2, verse 15 to 16, he said, But Peter standing up with the elect, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Move men and Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be it known on and hawked in right words. For these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour. It was nine o'clock in the morning, and they thought that they were dreaming. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet. Watch this. In Peter's introduction of his message, his introduction let them know who he was speaking to and what he was speaking about. It was straightforward and to the point. His message was simple to understand. So Peter spoke with a simplicity, like how Paul puts it in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 4, here's what he said. He said, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and the how Paul reminded his readers that his preaching was not to sound good in the ears of men. His desire was for the Holy Spirit to walk through him, use him to preach or to speak in power. Not only that Peter spoke with simplicity, he spoke clearly and loudly. In verse 14 of chapter 2 in the book of Acts, but Peter lifting up are uh, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them. Notice, he lifted up his voice, which made he spoke loudly, and he said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be knowing exactly who he was speaking to. Peter was not afraid to address the audience and call them by name and let them know who he was speaking to. He said, be this known on you and hearken to my words. I want you to understand this and I want you to hearken to my words. Listen up to this message. I've noticed something else. It was instructing and informative. He was not preaching to move the pleating emotion of Many today preach just to hear the people shout and that get them excited. That was not Peter's motive preaching. There was a lot of hooping 
and shouted into the ears preaching. But it was not so in preaching back then. The message is weird at the mind. It should cause people to hate. The message is to be geared at the hearts, at the conscience, and at the will. It should cause people to decide. In Isaiah chapter number one and verse number 18, listen to these words. Come now, it's a decision to be made. He said, and let us reason together. Come, and when you come for reasoning, you and I, me and God, you and God, come for reason. Say it, the Lord. It is God who is calling. He says, come now. He says, let us reason together. One may ask, but what's here for me and God to reason about? When I finish reasoning with God, I will always be well. He said, doing your sins mean as God. In other words, he wants you to come to reason with him about our sins. He said, though they be as God. One may ask, what do you give the result of the reasoning? He said, they shall be as white as when you come and be reason about your sins. It doesn't matter what you have done, you will be forgiven. He said, though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. But in order for the death to happen, watch what? You must come. It's one day to hear a message, understand a message, but it is something else to act on the message. The need today is for preachers preach the word. Let me say it again. The need to be is for preachers to preach the word. It is to preach and teach Jesus. When we go to chapter 5 of Acts and verse 42, the Bible said, and daily in the temple and in every house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Oh, what a message it was. And then notice, it was a scriptural message. It was a message from the word. I like what Paul did to Timothy when he wrote that he admonished Timothy. Timothy was admonished by his mentor to teach and preach the word. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, he said, Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, repose, rebuke, and exhort with long suffering and doctrine. Today, the word sometimes is the least spoken of in services. But the service should be about preaching the word. It is the word Peter was preaching. Peter was preaching for them to develop faith and listening to the message. And the only thing that could do it was the word. The only thing that could develop faith in, in, in anyone's heart is the word. You say, preacher, you sure? I am sure. And in Romans 10, 17 said, So then faith come in by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Oh, Peter, thank you for preaching the word. Preachers, thank you for preaching the word. For when he got it right, he was bold to tell them, I'm speaking to you, but I'm speaking to you from the word of God. Now I've noticed, oh boy, these days, my little time runs so quick. My time is up for today. Don't want to keep you too long because I know you may have a busy day today. So I'll be back next morning. God bless you. Thank you so much for listening. God bless your people. Protect them from harm. Protect them from danger. Bless them as they share. For those who listen, speak to their hearts. May they come to know you as Savior who don't know you. And may your people be encouraged, especially your preachers. And for those who may have walked away from you, Lord, bring them back and help them to realize that you want to give them another chance. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Share this with a friend, our loved one. God bless. Have a good day.